Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Elena Sturman. I am the president and CEO of the Glaucoma Foundation. The foundation was established in 1984 to bring awareness to the risks and repercussions of glaucoma and with the goal of improving treatment on the way to finding glaucoma. Our longstanding mission is to improve the lives of people with glaucoma. And so we regularly provide information and education for clinicians, patients, and the public through our website, newsletters, and events like this one. Today's webinar is about some of the remarkable hands-free devices available for people with compromised vision. Our expert today is Dr. Stephen Schoenbart, the founder of Schoenbart Vision Care on Long Island. He has been practicing since 1978, and he specializes in helping patients who have decreased vision due to eye diseases such as glaucoma. Today's webinar is sponsored by Santen. We are so grateful for their partnership, vision, and support. Dr. Sean Bart, we are so happy to have you with us and excited to learn about various optical tools you work with every day and how they impact vision and quality of life of so many people. We also look forward for a Q&A session with our audience. If anyone has a question for Dr. Sean Bart, please type it in the chat box and we'll do our best to get it at the end of the talk. Let's begin. Good evening and uh, thank you, Olina, and thank you, uh, Dr. Murray Fingeret for uh, inviting me. I've known Dr. Fingeret for over three decades and uh, we both have the same passion of really helping people see better and keeping their ocular health as best as we can. Um, we're gonna talk about basically ways that we can help increase and enhance visual acuity for patients with eye disease. And the eye disease can be from glaucoma, macular degeneration, diabetic retinopathy. A lot of times, many people come to our office asking for new glasses, or they've been told that their glasses are the best they can have. And unfortunately, that's not the final answer. There are many different types of glasses, magnifiers, telescopes, and different type of tints that can help enhance vision. And tonight, I'd like to discuss that and show that and demonstrate so I can enlighten people to really see what's out there that they might want to seek out to see if they can get a little better improvement on their vision. Uh, Alina, next slide, please. And that's our cover picture of us. And we have offices located in Garden City in Long Island and Southampton. Okay, next one. Alina is controlling the slides for us this evening. So, so as I just said, basically, a lot of people feel that their glasses are just not strong enough. And their well-meaning doctor says that basically this is the best pair of glasses we can use. And unfortunately, there are different lenses and lots of lenses, which I'm going to demonstrate today and show you different various uh, pictures and photographs. And we have some patients who have used different ones to help increase the reduced vision. Next slide, please. Oh, something happened. Okay, here we go. Here we go. And of course, Seeing a low vision doctor does not mean it takes it away from your regular doctor. So the most important thing is, is that we're going to continue staying with your regular doctor treating your glaucoma. You continue with them with their regular field of views and uh, the visual fields and the OCTs and pressure tests and medications. Uh, the low vision doctor is really an adjunct. And the adjunct is to get records from the doctor that's following you, to get information on yourself. And when we see people, we want to find out what's on their wish list. What is it that they've been aiming to do that they are unable to do? And once again, once we hear those tasks, we try to plan something after our examination, evaluation on what's going to work best for them. Next slide. So as many might know, glaucoma affects our peripheral vision. Unfortunately, it's a slow and it's a gradual change that goes unnoticed because it's painless. And the picture on the left is a regular full field. And as time goes by, the reduction is in the peripheral on the right side. And patients come in saying, something's not right. I need new glasses. And it turns out that the glasses aren't the problem. It's the eye. We're going to come back to this slide further on. But this is something called side vision awareness glasses. They are lenses that are using prisms to help increase the field of view. 
We can't make it perfect and we can't bring it back to what it was, but we can increase the field of view by about 15 to 20 degrees on each side. Next slide. Pictured here is what's called a full diameter telescope. And what happens is, is we are basically magnifying the better part of the retina and the optic nerve and minimizing the bad part. And if we can magnify the best part, we're gonna have patients and we're gonna teach them to look to the sides that have good vision. And we're gonna hopefully increase the magnification so they'll be able to see better. So this one is gonna be used when you're seated, you're gonna be looking at television, you're gonna to go to a show, you're gonna see people at far away at a theater show where the kids, the grandkids are performing. Uh, this is gonna be more for when you're set sedentary. Next slide. And as you can see, the magnification from standard print through the telescope. Um, we can use this for distance as well as reading. And the advantage of a telescope is that if with glaucoma, we have a narrow field of view. Well, we can use that advantage using telescopes because it's also looking through a tubular area that will actually en enhance the magnification of the, um, of the print and allow us to read better. Lighting is very important and tint is very important, which a few slides will show as well. Uh, again, please. Types of lenses, just like cameras, we can actually have what's called a wide angle lens. And a wide angle lens will do exactly that. It actually increases the field of view. Once again, patients suffering from glaucoma are not happy because peripheral vision is not doing well. And of course, having had a visual field, which is of course important to evaluate what you see out in space, will help us to determine what kind of lens we might wanna use. So this patient actually can see much better straight ahead with a wider angle left and right. Next slide, please. We talked about tints because a lot of people are concerned with the glare that comes through. So we customize these lenses, not only with the patient's prescription inside the telescope, but it's also the prescription peripherally. This particular frame has a full diameter lens, so you're not seeing much of the peripheral prescription, but the tint helped out a lot because the erroneous glare on the sides were very bad. So this way we can get to have magnification with the tint together. Next slide. As we see different types of people, different types of shapes and different types of uh, styles, both of these are called bioptics, and a bioptic is like a bifocal. The bottom part is the carrier lens, which has the patient's distance prescription. It also has the distance prescription incorporated inside the telescope. So it's a dual action or a bi action. And the bifocal type of lens is when we talk about optics is two different lens focus. Um, you actually can tip your head back to see people and events that you want to, and then slowly come down and you get to have magnification. And they all have different types of magnifications. The one on the left is close to a 3.x magnification. The one on the right is a 2.25x. So it depends on what we want to use them for. The advantage is, is to increase the magnification. The disadvantage with increasing it even too much is that you lose the peripheral field. You lose the field of view. So again, with glaucoma patients, we want to basically get the best uh, field of view that's possible. We use the same lenses for same diseases that are affecting the central vision like macular degeneration and diabetic retinopathy. Next slide. So this is a close-up view. The top one is a wide angle lens. The bottom one is actually a wide angle lens of a stronger power. So the stronger you go, people want the strongest magnifier, the strongest lens. Unfortunately, the stronger you go, the smaller the lens gets. It's just a property of optics. So we try again to get the median side that's gonna work best for the patient. Next slide. And as we talked about to have it for distance, which are the top two, the bottom one is actually a close focus telescope. And when it becomes a close focus, it's really a telemicroscope to use for close. And many people might remember seeing their dentist and uh, on television shows, the OR room has the doctors using these scopes. This is the same company that makes them for the doctors and the surgeons. And we're using the same technology for close focus. Once again, magnifying to have different distances to be in focus. 
a few slides now. We're going to show that. Next slide, please. This person's a nurse, and she couldn't read the charts any longer. And she came in, and yes, they look like Dr. Scopes, and that's what I ended up calling her, Dr., her first name. And basically, she was able to walk the halls. She would drop it down when she's walking around, and she had to pick up a chart. She would pick it up and be able to read very well. So a telescopic reading lens gives us a working distance that's further away than reading glasses. Because the stronger you go with reading glasses, the closer is the working distance, which is functional, but sometimes a little too close. Next slide, please. And here's a patient that's interesting. So we have here from 14 inches. Um, it's a high power lens, as it says. And the distance is, it, it depends again, where we wanna focus things. This particular patient, one good eye is really the best. If you notice on the right eye, we occluded the bottom portion. So she was able to not have what's called a retinal rivalry of one eye seeing big and one eye not seeing. Um, but we usually use the better seeing eye, if not both eyes. And we try to give the distance that's needed for different tasks. Some people have different glasses. Some people have different lens caps that go over this telescope to change it for different tasks. Some people want to sew and knit, where other people want to use needlepoint and that would require a different lens power. So we like to show different types of uh, patients and different types of glasses that are available. Next slide, please. So this is a full, uh, this is a uh, close focus with the woman who's just wearing for both eyes, because we don't wanna shy away from having both eyes see the best we can. And this particular one set for 13 inches, which is pretty much like a computer screen. 16 inches, 18 inches is normal. A lot of people can be further, of course, but if you have low vision, a 13 inch is a pretty good distance to have a screen or a laptop or an iPad close enough. And what's nice is the top half, they can kind of get an orientation where they are. Um, iPads now are really advantaged because of the fact of making the font size larger. And the magnification at the bottom, I'd like to say, is pretty limitless. Uh, and it works out quite well for them to do their task. Next slide. And this is a stronger reading telescope. And as you see, stronger means smaller, smaller means a little bit more narrower. However, they're converged. And this one's converged for about 12 inches, 10 to 12 inches. Um, and again, it depends on what the task is going to be. So what we're trying to show is that really there's an endless desire of what we need to use to achieve our goal. And if our goal is to read, we use things of this sort, which I'll show you some more with magnification. If it's for distance, for television, for people, for theater, for kids, for grandkids performing in sports, we use distance scopes. They're pretty much task specific, which means it's gonna be maybe one for one task and one for another. We try to do one design and do multiple things with it. But again, everybody is very unique in what we need to do. Next slide. So like I just mentioned, this person's wearing a high power reading lens and using magnification to be able to read the paper. Does it successfully? If we used a telescope, he had to use a lamp over his shoulder and he couldn't use it where he wanted to go when he went to his children's house. So we ended up getting something that's more portable. And again, like an iPad, but it doesn't magnify what you want to read. An iPad will have something in it um, you know, already. Um, the iPhones and different type of phones can use as a magnifier, but the screen is way too small. So a device like this, which works out quite well with some form of reading glass, is what we want to try to do. Uh, next slide. So glare is a very big issue with glaucoma, with macular, with diabetic retinopathy patients. And um, a lot of people come in with their dark gray glasses that they've had cataract surgery with. They use that as their primary pair of sunglasses. And unfortunately, they're too dark. For the average eye, they work out real well because it reduces the whole spectrum of light and glare. If you think about the rainbow, a regular uh, sunglass is usually gray, could be brown for um, the glare of water and pools and parks and driving and golf. When we have what's called low vision, the transmission of light, especially with glaucoma, is not as good as it used to be. So between the eye and the brain, we have the optic nerve and things become dim. And when they're dim, we try to brighten them up. 
the lower right picture here, which is more of a, uh, a yellow uh, calochrome color, is more of a brighter uh, version of glare control. And we work in the yellow, orange, brown families to really see what's going to work best for people. Some of these lenses actually get darker outdoors, so they're transition low vision lenses. The lens on the bottom is actually a little thicker than the ones on the top. And we're going to talk about that in the next slide as far as what's called an e-scoop to try to magnify images and objects to our advantage. Because the more magnified they are, the bigger things are going to be. Orange lenses are better for nighttime or the glare of lights, headlights, and just go to the supermarkets that have these very bright, bright uh, fluorescent lights. It's a problem for the average eye. Now, if you have an increase in glare from other diseases, it's even worse. So again, we like to educate patients on different lenses. If we talk about sunglasses, other than those cataract sunglasses, they do come in all of these colors. They come in the yellows, the golds, the browns. There's two other colors. One's hazelnut of a brown and one's called boysenberry, which is a purpley. And um, a company invented those names. I did not. So basically, we try to get ones that are going to work well for the patient. Uh, some can go over their glasses, but I really like to have one that is a separate pair that will cover, give you good uh, glare control, and make you comfortable. And of course, a hat with a brim works out well. So once again, glare control is something to think about and to ask about because the colors is what makes the difference. Next slide. So a doctor in Holland invented something called e-scoops. It's a patented lens, and it has six properties, just what it's listed. And this doctor who was an optometrist, he actually said, how can I make things get bigger without using a telescope? Because telescopes are kind of ugly, which they are. They're very functional, which they are, and they work out really well, which they do. Yet a lens that has a thickness to it can add a little magnification. So we all want to get glasses that are very thin and cosmetically pleasing. Hence, e-scoops is just the opposite. We try to go thicker. And the reason is, if we can go thicker, so an average lens is about 2.2 millimeters thickness. These lenses are between six and nine millimeters. So they're almost four times thicker. The thickness actually adds a little bit of magnification to it. So magnification will make images a little bit larger. He also thought about doing a special curve. If you curve the lens, light will be curved into the back of the eye and it will hit a certain part of the back of the eye. And if it bends to the right degree, patients might say, I see better. Then we have the, uh, the, uh, curve, uh, the uh, thick, um, all that thickness, curve, and um, prism. So he also said that vertical prism, if light goes straight ahead into the eye, that's okay, but that's kind of like the area that well, with macular patients, we don't want to see because that's the bad part. With glaucoma patients, we do have central vision, but sometimes that area is not perfect either. If we shift it a little higher or lower to the macula of the eye, patients might see better. And the tint of the lens is really the glare. So between glare, the prescription, thickness, the curvature, and um, the tint. Did I mention the tint? Yeah. We basically have everything to really um, put together to see if people get a big wow, because we need a wow. If we put on a lens and patient says, it's okay, then we can just do a nice tinted lens. Many times we put on a lens that has this thickness to it, and all of a sudden they'll say, you know, things are better, and they are better. This particular patient has it in a clip-on fashion. That was the first generation, because we weren't able to make the lens and the clip-on and the prescription all in one. But now we can, again, with technology, by making it a more cosmetic lens works out quite well. Again, you may not want to wear this all the time. Uh, watching television doesn't work because yellow against color television is not great. But again, task specific. Walking around outside in a theater, in anywhere, as far as shopping in the malls, they give patients a lot better contrast. And if they are still driving, which is what everyone wants to do as well, this helps along with as far as the glare and contrast. Okay, next slide. So we talked about this earlier. What does one do when we have reduced vision, uh, visual field, sorry? Well, the vision's decreased also, but as far as visual awareness, we wanna to try to increase this. And prisms actually bend light 
to an area that can actually open up a spot that we're not seeing. And we do this for patients with glaucoma. We do this with patients who have had strokes. There's also another eye disease called retinitis pigmentosa, which is similar to glaucoma, unfortunately. And if we can increase their peripheral vision, they'll be able to walk better and function better. Next slide. So a doctor invented another designed lens. And if you see the glasses at the bottom, there is a line and to the left is a prism. And it's only half of the lens because that's the area that we wanna increase. I have prescribed a prism like this on both lenses in the both areas to help increase the peripheral vision. The acceptance rate is great because years ago we used to use a filter, which I should say even now we still use a filter called a Fresnel prism, but the contrast of vision is reduced dramatically. It can increase the peripheral vision, but when they look to the side, it's very blurry. This lens is as clear as the patient's prescription and that's the pleasure. The next slide, this talks about this better. So I'll just read what we have here. It's pretty much what I just said, but they were designed to assist people suffering from side vision loss. And it is considered a low vision de device because basically if we can help increase someone who's not happy with their vision, they're basically considered low vision. Um, a low vision patient is someone who is just not happy seeing the way they are. A lot of doctors feel that the big E, when someone cannot see the big E, they are low vision. And that's not necessarily true. Driving in New York, you need to have 20-40 vision. That's a good thing. You need to have a full field of view to see left and right. But patients who are about 20-80, 20-70, they're not happy. And that's considered a low vision patient because they're not 20-20. So when we talk about all these different lenses and e-scoops and tints and glare and magnification, most patients who are not seen as well as they want to should be evaluated. Next up, uh, I think we have some slides now. Oh, last is, and this has been given uh, on, on previous webinars from um, on, on, on the Glaucoma Foundation. I wanted to leave out the electronics, but where technology is now with AI and all of this uh, um, um, artificial intelligence, this is called the Geordi, and it's one of the original, one, this particular one's the newest style, but Geordi came out years ago. And this is an autofocusable telescopic pair of glasses. Now, what does that mean? Well, before I was showing a two times or three times different type of magnification, this actually starts out at about two times and it will zoom into about 12 times, all with the flick of a knob. Advantage is, is that you have multiple powers there. You can actually use it for distance and for reading. You do have to recharge it. It does have electronics to it for about three hours of a three, three and a half hours of straight use, but it works out well. Disadvantages, it's a little bit more cumbersome. And the older population with technology get a little concerned. So I'd rather give a pair of glasses that will work well, that stay on the face. You don't have to use a battery. You don't have to turn a switch on. Just put it on with what you like to see, and it works out quite well. But again, the options are here for everyone. And I had a patient just today, 92, and uses a computer all day long. So it's not an age issue. It's just what they feel are going to want to use all day long. Okay, we have some uh, some um, uh, testimonials actually, and, and and they weren't solicited. They were picking up glasses, and uh, just for some people to hear how these glasses really work for patients. Uh, Lana, go, go, Lena. Hi, Anthea. Tell me about your uh, new glasses. Well, Dr. Sean Bart is the first doctor I've been to in a very long time who understood my vision, and he helped me to see perfectly. I strongly recommend that you drop by to see him. Well, thank you. Enjoy. Hello, Tyree. You're picking up your new glasses. Tell us about them. Wow. It's a game changer. I'll be able to watch TV and actually read a newspaper now. And where are you going this week with your wife, I'm you said? I'm going to Florida. <laughs> and then yeah. you're going to the theater? I'm <laughs> going to the theater. We're going we're gonna to see a show. Fantastic. I'll be able to see them on the stage. Oh, you enjoy. Wow. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks so much. Good morning, Ms. Goodman. And tell us, how are your new glasses doing? My new glasses are so exciting. I'm so excited to get them home and be able to see 
for the first time ever my almost one year old granddaughter. So um, thanks to doctor, I've been given a new lease on life. That's fantastic. And how is the iPad when you're using it? Oh, phenomenal, phenomenal. I mean, the things I used to be able to do, I really, really miss. And I now am able to do them again. Oh, so great. I have a whole new lease on life. That's and, fabulous. And I'm grateful. You're welcome. Enjoy. Thank you. Did I say now? I said my heart is fluttering. I, I feel like a kid in a candy store, man. You just don't know how good I feel just to be able to see somewhat better than what I used to get. Doc, man, I really, man, thank you. You, you don't know how. My you pleasure. Change, but, man, you don't. Oh man, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's like, ah, like, you know, like something just been released off and just something just, yeah. you know, like. We got you seeing again. Yeah, seeing, yeah, a lot better, man. That's I mean, great. clearly, at least, you know. Good, good. This, man. Good. Great. So, so really, it, 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 it's to share what low vision glasses can do. It's, it's, it's to share what people might be missing. And it's not about me, myself. It's really what I want everyone to do is to look up low vision doctor. Just look up a low vision doctor because really that's what it's about. It's about being able to help people see the best they can. You can't change the eye disease and the fabulous doctors, not only in this group of the glaucoma foundation that you hear every month, all the doctors around the country, we try our darndest to keep things the best they can. And what we try to do is low vision optometry is to try to make that vision that's remaining the best we can. So if there's any questions or I shall let Alina take over, thank you very much. I hope I was informative. It was great, Dr. Schoenberg. Thank you so much for this really fantastic presentation. And as uh, our audience can see, these devices are truly life-changing. I hope that now uh, our audience will start asking questions. I have two questions so far. Uh, one question is, Will any of these glasses help people with being able to drive? So driving is actually the number one thing where people come in, I want to drive, I want to read. You ask everyone about a wish list. So the glasses, if you meet certain criteria, yes, the answer is yes. However, we need to test the peripheral vision to make sure we have enough. In New York State, there's requirements. And just to throw out the numbers, I mean, you need to have at least 2100 acuity for distance. You need to be able to get to 2040 vision with the telescope. However, with glaucoma, we need to have a full field of view of 140 degrees, and that's determined with the visual field. And there's a certain test within the visual field to do that. But again, to get records from the doctor, to see where we're at, to see what's going on, that's the first step. Um, let, let's leave it at that there, yeah. Great, thank you so much. So here's the next question. Uh, what kind of doctor do we see that specializes in the area that you just described? A low vision optometrist. So low, low, low vision is a subclass of optometry. Um, I did a, a, a residency at the Northport VA hospital in rehabilitative optometry. So you wanna find someone who has done some form of rehabilitative optometry and that just basically means rehabilitation. Um, the, the, that, that you want to look up very simple words, low vision doctor around the world, around the country, just low vision doctor. And a lot of people can come up. You want to find out. The other thing is you want to see, make sure that with a low vision examination, you're being shown telescopic glasses. A lot of times people are handed uh, some form of loop or some form of magnifier. And they say that, that that's the best you can do, which may very well be the case. But a true uh, low vision of is using telescopic glasses. Thank you. And the next question is just to follow up on this one. How can you find a low vision doctor? Google is a fabulous uh, mechanism. Low vision doctor. That is all you need to put in. I, I, unless you think of a, a glaucoma doctors or, uh, or um, a rehabilitation with glaucoma. I, I, I think just low vision is the buzzword now for patients to find uh, a doctor in the area um, to help you out. I, I, I'm with a group of doctors and there's about 44 of us now. We are international throughout the country. So uh, if you look up low vision doctor, you look up low vision, you look up low vision in your town of, of, of we're in Garden City or Southampton or, or California, uh, Indiana, all, all over the country. So that, that, that's what we should be 
exploiting to tell people because people still to this day come in and their well-meaning doctor says this is the best pair of glasses I can give you, Mr. Smith. And um, it's not the case. And they come in, they go, how come we haven't heard about this? And that's the problem. So low vision doctor is all we need to start with. Thank you very much. Next question, Dr. Schoenbart. What can be done to improve contrast? It's a great question. So especially with glaucoma, the transmission of light going through the optic nerve is a problem. And as I mentioned, uh, tints are hopefully the answer. Uh, tint is highlighting the spectrum of light. So light is white light. And if you break it up into the rainbow, the red, yellow, orange, green, blue, indigo, the whole, the whole spectrum, we try to work on the lighter colors to help enhance that. And not every lens is going to be good for each situation. So a yellow lens at high noon is not going to be good. A yellow lens in the snow is not good. So you'll have to have another pair. Now, they don't all have to be prescription. Some could be as in there, they're $70. They're not expensive, but then they could be a good couple hundred dollars. So it depends on what we need to do. But it's a matter of coming up with the right color uh, wavelength to work for that particular patient. Everyone is different. And not everyone is unique. Uh, you know, not everyone is the same. Not everyone's unique. Thank you, thank you. Uh, next question. Do your glasses help people with macular degeneration? Absolutely, absolutely. In fact, I, I, this is more glaucoma foundation, so we wanted to just earmark it for that, but I mentioned also it's really for the three, the three, unfortunately, the three diseases in the eye are all painless changes that people don't realize they have until sometimes it's too late. Glaucoma, macular degeneration, and diabetic retinopathy. Mm -hmm. and most people come into their doctors, again, they're well-meaning doctor, and they say, I need new glasses. And the news is that, sorry, it's not an eyeglass problem, it's an eyeball problem. And my own mother, who had macular degeneration, said, I just want new glasses. I need stronger glasses. And that's what happens. So the key is, is to be on top of it. And if any other takeaway message is, is that annual eye exams are very important. And not only for the patient who has an eye disease, the patient's family members. So if our parents have it, it's a chance that we have it. If our siblings have it, it's more important. If our children and whatnot, it's very, very important. Thank you very much. So uh, one question is, how expensive are these devices? And is there a range so, covered by insurance? Yeah, great. So unfortunately, um, they're not usually covered. Um, I'm trying to think of the, uh, the hierarchy to go. So, so regular glasses can be regular glasses. They can have reading glasses, $500. Telescopes can go up to $3,500. Um, hearing aids are like $8,000. So it doesn't even compare to things like that. But the key is to see what, what our criteria is. The good thing is, is that um, they're available. The, the, if people are having really poor vision and they are declared legally blind, then the state agencies can help out. But we don't want to get to that point. So that's the catch-22. We want to get you beforehand. Mm -hmm. Some insurances might pay for some portion of glasses. They do not usually cover for the evaluation. They do not usually cover for the type of telescopes. And that's really on an individual basis. Um, a low vision exam is actually totally different than a regular eye exam. We take a history. We, take, we use different charts. We don't usually use the wall chart. There's, there's flip charts that we're using. Different lighting is different. It's about a 60 minute to maybe about a 75 minute eye exam. It's not like a 15 minute in, out, done, away we go. We trial all different types of lenses to really achieve goal. So having said that between time and material of what you might get, it depends. So the range, like I said before, it, it, it could be hundreds, it could be a couple of thousand, but it's not in like tens of thousands. Mm -hmm. Just to, on that point, the electronics that come out, they were very expensive, like $15,000, the east sites and different things, they've come down. But again, they're not all great in their sense. They're all coming out and they're all trying to make their, their, the home run. That, that, that's the holy grail that really makes something work well. A regular pair of glasses to put on without having batteries or anything is still the answer to go with as far as I'm concerned. Thank I hope you. that answered the question. Thank you very much. And uh, one of our audience members, didn't have a question, but just wanted to thank you for this very important information. My pleasure. And I, I think we've answered all the questions. Uh, oh no, one more, hold on a second. I think we have one more question. If one has one good eye and one bad eye, say glaucoma, is it most relying the good eye to read, the bad eye is having very low acuity? 
would it be advisable to get this low vision glasses option to occasionally tra train the bad eye to read? So how good is the good eye is the question. If it's 2020, no, we're just gonna wait until hopefully nothing ever changes. Um, and that's a great question because everyone wants their other eye taken care of mm -hmm. and we cannot do that. So if the, let's just say the right eye is your better seeing eye and it's not bad, 2020, 2030, 2040, maybe that's good. If it starts reducing, I'm sorry, and the left eye is really bad, like the big E, which is about 2400 or 2100, you can't give a telescope just for one eye because the brain will not adapt to it. Yeah. So the question is, you're very fortunate, you keep being monitored on that, but for reading, we usually can help the good eye see better if it's what I think it might be. If you're 2020, but no, we're not going to make it see better. But usually people have about a 2040, 2050 vision, which is okay for driving, it's not bad. But the other eye is what we want to monitor. So the, the good eye is what we want to monitor closely because we don't want it to get like the, the bad eye. And one final point on that. When patients come in like that, and a lot of people come in like that, they're like 2050, 2060, which is not terrible. And the other eye is not good at all. It is, it is bad. And people come in, they come in with just their, just like this, I'm coming in. And the problem that they don't remember is that this one good eye needs protection. And that means you're gonna get a pair of glasses and it could be clear glass if it is, but for protection in what's called polycarbonate lenses, and they can be the lenses that change, they get darker, they become a sunglass because if something off of it happens to that good eye, you have a bigger problem and people don't realize that. So I try to recommend getting some form of protection lens to use when you're out and about. I mean, in the house, hopefully it's a little safer, but even a, a piece of cereal can hit your eye and you got a problem. So I'm very much in tune to telling patients eye protection is the ultimate important thing to have. Thank and you. That that. Thank you. Great, great. Uh, one more. Sure. Uh, please review the colors for certain situations to help reduce glare. Right. So, well, that's pretty unique. So again, we start out with a brighter yellow because yellow really highlights things and then it becomes more of an orange. There's, there's different degrees of the yellow in percentages of 40, 60, 80, and then it goes into an orange, then it goes into a brown. So there's different um, um, transmissions is what it really is. We have a kit that has, um, I think they're 24 uh, uh, slides of, of, of low, medium, high of uh, eight different colors. Eight, yeah, 24. So, um, and it goes into more of, it can go into the lavenders, the browns, the grays, the yellows, the orange, and the browns, or I think I said that. Anyway, so it's, 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 it's not one color, but more of that yellow amber can try to see how that works. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think we've answered all the questions and uh, the presentation was truly fantastic and the answers were fantastic. So I just want to say in our conclusion, a uh, couple of things. If you are struggling with low vision, I hope you've been inspired to consult a specialist like Dr. Sean Bart or Dr. Sean Bart himself. If you would like more information on low vision exams and therapies, you can find other webinars on this subject on our events page and our website. And you can look at under the tab about glaucoma and you'll find a section listing patient resources. As always, this presentation was recorded. So if you would like to see it again, it will be available in a few days on our website. I would like to thank again, Dr. Sean Bart so much for this presentation. And if you will think of questions that we haven't answered, please get in touch with us and we'll be happy to answer it offline. Uh, good night, everybody. Thank you again, Dr. Sean Bart. Anything you want to add? Thank you. And uh, thank you for joining this webinar. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.